Well, hello everyone. It's been a while since I commentated on anything, but in any case, my name is Slow, and I've got a game I want to show you. I was actually shown this literally like less than 12 hours ago by the one and only Azerite Reaction. And this is a game called Igneous. It's a free game, and I'm going to show it to you real quick. So this is the level zero of the game and a blue aura possesses this statue and if you freeze frame at some point during there it literally looks like a Daru marker stone statue with a glowing blue afro which I found pretty hilarious but this is the, this is the level zero and is essentially a completely unguided tutorial type device and we control this stone statue by rolling it around and pressing things to make it jump. So we go over here and things are taking a turn to the worse, perhaps. So, now we are entering the first proper level of the game, and so what? it is a good time to describe the gameplay of the game. What I would like to call this is like... Um, it's hard to say really. The only game that I've played where you essentially fly down a straight pathway and dodge things and get to the end is Sky Roads, which was an MS-DOS game by Blue Moon Interactive, or whatever those guys were called. And if you want to go and play that game, go ahead. It's free from their website and it's a lot of fun. We even had a Christmas version, but then again it was an MS-DOS era type game where essentially those kind of special editions were commonplace. Gameplay is done by either the keyboard, the mouse, or via an Xbox 360 controller. The developers have claimed that the control mechanisms for the gamepad type gameplay are not be are restricted to the Xbox 360 controller, not because they were discriminatory against any other type of control of the game, but because they simply couldn't program anything else other than 360 controller. That what you saw there was one of two glitches that I found in the game and it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. However, the game is capable of being played in non-wide screens so you may be able to avoid having to see that if you play it in what standard definition. So that was the first level and I didn't even go through the um, controls. On the Xbox 360 controller you're, you move around where you're using the analogue stick and you just press the A button to jump and pick weird sounds. That's literally all there is to this game, it's very simple. However the experience of the game is to put it in a very underwhelming sense or phrase, it's pretty much just an experience as you just continue going forwards and just watching absolutely everything around you explode or fall or crash. The normal difficulty is pretty much just the standard sight reading difficulty and with the exception of that stage 3 is not hard at all. Or I should stay, say stage 2 because I don't count the tutorial as an actual level. Oh my god lasers! And so begins the third proper stage and actually this is the last stage of the game. It's very short and 
That was just my first attempt because I don't remember. I was sight reading the um, game at this time and had no idea of how the final stage plays. So essentially what you do in this stage is you pick a path left or right and you fly down that path and avoid gigantic lasers of death. And occasionally the rest of the world will fall down around you. One thing that you can do in this game that kind of helps lower the difficulty level to an ex acceptability is that even if you only just barely clutch the side of a wall, it regains your ability to jump. It's essentially which combined with certain levels of the game allows you to pull off some pretty incredible saves where you simply come back from the brink of falling into an in infinite pit. And in normal difficulty you also have a so-called Call of Duty style regenerative health where in certain situations where you actually take damage and do not die, you will start glowing red and a haze effect will appear on the screen, indicative of your damage level. And that is the end of the last level already. And the ending is simply we shoot the whoop this guy. That was literally how short the game was, it's only 6 minutes to complete from start to finish, with additional time required to spend on it if you somehow get stuck at any part. But as you noticed, may have remembered at the start of the video, this game has two difficulties, normal and the so called impossible difficulty, which isn't that impossible but it definitely does stuff. So this is the first proper stage again, with impossible difficulty turned on, and there honestly isn't too much of a difference aside from the gigantic wall of magma that's chasing us at presumably faster speed than before. Unfortunately you are pretty much a one hit wonder and any critical mistake is going to get you killed. Or rather in the form of this rolling statue type block you'll end up simply just jumping into the air like Mario style. However, somehow, even on impossible difficulty, those small balls of magma which can hit you from behind don't kill you in one hit. And I'm not completely sure why that is. Maybe like a um, form of pity. But the second, this real, that real stage on impossible is not bad. However, then you get to this level. And this level on impossible difficulty essentially is throwing the kitchen sink at you. The level of destruction of the road you're on takes is absolutely colossal. And also getting hit by the debris itself happens way more frequently on this difficulty. This can be considered to be possibly the main roadblock to anyone who actually wants to beat this game. And what's interesting about this level is two things. One is that every time you play it, 
the obstacles are randomised. So every time you attempt this level, something else is going to happen differently. And for that reason, it's also possibly the source of some of the um, main, what I would call the amazing comebacks. Where if you fly off the edge of the screen, off the bottom of the screen, and you can climb onto certain pieces of falling debris, you can pull some amazing clutch saves that will just simply leave you thinking that was amazing. Although most of the time you will just fail. I didn't even get to mention the soundtrack for this game, it is absolutely incredible. And it hints that you should wear headphones and to be honest you really should do. It amplifies it to an incredible degree of epicness. The game is also very impressive to look at, even if it will make your game lag. That was just the ultimate dick move I've ever seen in the game itself. I actually laughed at that somehow. Yeah, this game has a very high difficulty level on the top difficulty and as I say it's less of a game more than the case of it is an experience as you're just this lone rolling soldier who's constantly rolling forwards towards certain doom. And just look at all the fire and magma. If ever there was a game that you could literally just have a complete blatant excuse to put through the fire and flames as a background music, then by all means, this game pretty much has that covered. Oh yeah, and the last level is essentially a very simple change in that. Yeah, it throws more lasers at you, and the lasers are complete, instant, and sometimes unavoidable death. Like, if you barely clip, like even get close to the lasers, you're going to get fried. And so, the best strategy for tackling this level is less a case of trying to take your chances and go between the lasers but simply to veer out of the way as far as you can because the lasers also try to home in loosely on where you're trying to go the massive amount of activity that goes on while this is all going on is sometimes distracting but very, very impressive to watch. And even if the game is very short, I liked this game a lot. And I would I highly recommend that if your computer is decent enough to actually run it, then you should just go out go onto the internet and download it for yourself. It's only in like 120 megabytes. What harm could it do? Thank you for watching, this has been slow. Farewell. Yo. Cool.